afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Lime Rock Raceway as we get ready for the running of the Trackmania Nations Forever 300. We are here getting ready for a 20-lap event with Dylan Young on the pole, and we certainly saw in the Truck Series race where the chase certainly took a little bit of a change, a lot of shuffling of positions in the points, and a surprise winner of Chris Dollerton working out pit strategy to be able to take his second checkered flag of the season. Will we see the same thing here today in this Lime Rock race? Can't wait to find out. Coming into this race, Eric Burton is currently the points leader. I don't even see him in this camera shot. He's starting way at the back of the pack. He's got his work cut out for him today. May have to rely on that kind of radical pit strategy Chris Dalton used to maybe get himself up to the front. He comes in with a nine-point advantage over Ralph Mason, who lost the points lead last week at Atlanta. Uh, I'm trying to find Ralph Mason, too, and I'm not really seeing him. I think I see him back there. I think he's on the very left of the screen in the outside row, so he's starting way at the back of the pack, too. Sean Galligan's starting about maybe four rows up ahead of him. You can see the light blue, the powder blue color of the Aspen Dental Toyota. He is going to roll off. Uh, mid-pack, and he comes into this race third in the points, a total of 21 points out of the top spot, and then Adam Chambers is actually the highest starting chaser that is up inside the top five in points. He's going to roll off from, I believe that's the seventh position, and he comes in a total of 24 points out of first place. There's Kyle Sosnowski's neon green car there, left side of your screen. He's fifth in points, currently a total of 27 points back. And then James Silverfox, who's actually out of all the chases the highest starter, he's up in the third position, or make that the fourth position for the start of this race. He is sixth in the standings, a total of 32 points out of the top spot. Actually, I'm wrong. That's 42 points. 40, 46, 46 points out of the top spot. Sorry about that. So we're about to get these cars rolling off. As it's going to be Dylan Young on the pole alongside of the uh, fellow f uh, Mustang. Jordan Davis, both drivers have been to victory lane this season. Davis, 15th in points, though, and Dylan Young still mired down at 34th in points. Jake Rogers still clawing, scratching, trying for his first win of the season. He's been 37th in points for a majority of this season. And of course, James Silverfox on the outside of row number two, still looking for his first win of the season after having three wins in his rookie season last year. Time to get these cars rolling off. They're going to complete, complete a couple pace laps while they do that. We will show you the starting lineup for today's race. It's going to be a wild one, a 20-lap event here at this very tricky road course. These drivers, some of them happy to be coming here to the road course because they're road course aces. Some of them happy that this is going to be our final road course visit of the season. We'll have to see how it works out for these drivers. As you can see back there, there's Eric Burton. I think he's rolling off somewhere around 39th position. As you saw there on the starting grid, Eric Burton rolling off from 40th place. I said 39th. So I was close, but Eric Burton, my goodness, how is he going to be able to pick up 40 positions in 20 laps? It's not impossible because, of course, we got these pit stops that are going to come into play, and there could be some pit strategy that they're going to, have, they're going to be able to use, but it could be awfully, awfully difficult because road course racing, they'll tell you, that's the hardest place to be able to pick up track position, whether it's under the green flag or under the yellow and pit strategy, but Dylan Young, Jordan Davis, get us underway, the green flag is out, 20 lap event here at Lime Rock. And Jordan Davis, I think he was caught napping on the start of that thing, Dylan Young got a good jump on him, he cleared that 28 car very quickly, he goes to the lead, side by side for second, Jake Rogers now trying to take advantage of the 28's mistake, but Jordan Davis has the 
bird line in that corner. He will take the second position back. Here comes Jake Rogers back down to the inside, still looking for it. This all going on behind the leader, Dylan Young. Side by side between the 28 and the 19. Preferred line now goes to Jake Rogers, and I believe he's going to clear him heading into the bus stop. Yes, he is. Rogers moves to second. Davis falls to third. Drew Austin has been able to take the fourth position away from James Zerfox, who now is under fire for the fifth position from Adam Chambers. Chambers is a two-time winner this season. And he's looking for his third win of the season. He's on the inside line of James Sawyer Fox now. That's a battle for a spot inside the top five. And as these guys have been battling hard from second on back, that's allowed the Dylan Young machine to just literally check out over the rest of the field. Look at that, about four car lengths, five car lengths in hand over second place driver Jake Rogers. So right now, things going really well for the driver of the Vaveline Next Gen Ford Mustang out of Rush Fenway Racing. Let's try and find out if Eric Burton, the points leader, has made up any ground. We know a lot of our top contenders are way back here. Looks like Burton's still boxed in. I don't think he's been able to go anywhere. He crossed the line in the 41st position last time around. He's been able to... I think he's now battling side by side for the 39th position with Michael Norman. And there's Ralph Mason just ahead. Joseph Bryant nearly loses it. Wow. That was close. Mason Bryant making some contact there off the final corner. Remember, Mason comes in second in points. Joseph Bryant, 11th in points. Really not in the championship picture anymore. And Eric Burton was right behind that. And there's Wolfgang Mason off track. Brings it back up, though. Right in front of Cole Daly. Good job, everybody, to avoid the 82 after he nearly spun it out. He went off track, brought it back on, and we're still green flag racing. We see Eric Burton. We see... Ralph Mason, where's third in points, Sean Galligan. He's up just a little bit further in the 32nd position. Right behind Trent Dunham there, who was seventh in points. A lot of our chasers did not get ideal qualifying positions for the start of this race. I don't know if that's just strategy or if that just worked out not in their favor. So Kyle Sosnowski had a fairly good qualifying result and there he is currently in the top 20 in the 17th position. Sosnowski is fifth in the points and he's trying to close in on our winner from last week at Atlanta, Luke Martin, to pick up the 16th position, maybe try and move close to a top 15 spot pretty soon as the lead just continues to beat Dylan Young. Nobody seems to be able to catch him. He has maintained that five car length advantage over Jake Rogers. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if it hasn't grown a little. Now, it's about five car lengths back to the Pepsi Dodge. Then you go back here behind him, just about the same distance, and maybe a little more to Jordan Davis there in the third position. Drew Austin back in fourth, and Adam Chambers currently in fifth. And it's Silver Fox, Buchanan. Graves, McNamara, and Danny Wells are going to complete the top 10 as Danny Wells is under fire from Charles Jackson. We're on lap 5 of 20. We're still green flag racing. We'll take a quick commercial break and be right back. Welcome back to the live action here from Lime Rock Raceway as we are underway here in the running of the Trackmania Nations Forever 250. Dylan Young is currently out in front. Jake Rogers right behind him. Then we got a good battle. It's starting to heat up here for third place between two rookies. Jordan Davis has it. Drew Austin wants it. You know, I was looking at the top five, and out of the top five, Jake Rogers in second place is the only driver who has not yet been to victory lane. Dylan Young's been to victory lane. Davis, Drew Austin, they've been to victory lane. And Adam Chambers, who's in the fifth position, has been to victory lane twice, so... Jake Rogers got to be feeling like the lone man out right now. Let's take a look at some drivers who really would love to have a win, have an opportunity here today. That's one of them right there. James Silverfox in the 31. Sixth in the point standings. Right now, he and Sean Gallagher are the only two drivers inside the top six in the chase standings that do not yet have a win. Every other driver who is with them inside that top six have multiple wins, at least two. And 
Silver Fox last season ended up capping off season four with a win in the season finale at Zanjoltis. That was his third win of the season in his rookie season. He's gone winless this season. Been a big surprise, but still been keeping up consistent finishes and putting together another great showing here today. There's Felix Graves. He's winless this season, that 14 car. We know that he's going to be moving over full time to the Snickers Cup Series next season for the newly formed Penske Germain Racing. And he's doing a great job right here. A nice showing for that 14 car. He's 21st in points. You know, the thing about Felix Graves was, as I recall, he was up inside the top 10 in points for a majority of the season. And then he just started getting DNF after DNF after DNF. Just seemed like every time the caution came out, the 14 was somehow involved. He's done a nice job of rebounding back. And I apologize for that. <laughs> I got Bioshock Infinite updating and something just popped up. But Felix Graves, great run for him right now in the 8th position. And I got more stuff loading up here. Probably it's uh, No Steam's website. It is John McNamara in the 10th position. This has been a driver who's really been close on several, several occasions. Just has not been able to close the deal. Right now he's behind the 54 of Danny Wells. McNamara really looking good. His biggest fling, I guess you could say, this season was when he was able to race his way into the All-Star race by finishing second place, and then when he got to the All-Star race, what did he do? Followed it up with a second place finish. And so John McNamara really turned some heads in the middle of the season. He's trying to be able to turn some heads here late in the season by picking up his first Mobile One Cup Series victory. Here's Trifon Reed in the 12 car in just a minute. I'm it's gonna freeze for a second. There we go. Oh, we got pit stops! Pit stops! Leader is pitting. Dylan Young, Jake Rogers, Jordan Davis, I think Drew Austin came down as well. The top four, at least, are all on pit road here midway through this race. Let's see what the strategy is going to be because we now know there are going to be 10 laps to go. And we know that they were able to make it 10 laps. So this is probably more than likely going to be their only stop. Are they are going to go for four? Are they just going to stick with two? Nope, they're all going with the four-tire strategy. That's the entire top five right there. Seven of the top ten on pit road. And Dylan Young, his team done. And look at Jordan Davis. He got out ahead of Jake Rogers. Very fast pit stop by the 28 team. They get out second. Rogers going to get out third. Then it's Austin. And then James Silverfox. Let's check back here. See if the other leaders are coming in now. Here they come. Adam Chambers, Zach Buchanan, Danny Wells. They're all on pit road. Drivers who did not pit last time are pitting this time. There you see Trifon Reed there. Charles Jackson, Dylan Pote, Johnson, Martin, our winner last week, McLeod, Riley Ogle. All on pit road. I think James McLeod actually just finished up his pit stop. Let's see, is leaving pit road. Let's see if Chambers and his team are able to get him out quick enough to be able to keep ahead <clears throat> of Dylan Young. Buchanan going to get out second again. And there's Jordan Davis bypassing. Dylan Young's long gone. Man, Dylan Young's team put together one light and fast pit stop, apparently. His chamber's going to come out. I think that's going to be in the third position. Nope, that's going to be fourth. But look at this. Dylan Young's team, flawless so far as Dylan Young, who had a five car length advantage before. He must have about a 12 to 15 car length advantage now over Jordan Davis. Biggest thing that Dylan Young's got to be hoping for now is that no caution fly comes out. This is quite a lead he's been able to build up over the rest of the field, courtesy of that green flag pit stop. Look at that. He's into the first corner. Jordan Davis just crossing the start finish line. That's quite a bit of distance, but because Barney Ward off pit road, is that going to be a problem for Dylan Young? It very well could be. Dylan Young encounters drivers up ahead like Barney Ward and has to wrestle with them to try and get by them. 
that could allow that gap to close up really quickly and bring Jordan Davis, Jake Rogers, Drew Austin to the back door of the six car. Right now, that looks like Barney Ward is up to speed with the rest of the field. So he's not really being caught by Dylan Young that quickly. So maybe, just maybe, Dylan Young won't have to encounter him after all, but you never know. Let's give you a rundown of the top 10, or maybe we'll go even further back through the top 20 after these green flag pit stops. So we have a total of seven laps to go. Dylan Young is the leader, Jordan Davis second, Jake Rogers third, Drew Austin fourth, and Chambers runs in the top five. Zach Ken is in sixth, James Silverfox seventh, eighth is Phyllis Graves, ninth Danny Wells, and Trifon Reed now is tenth. McNamara back in 11th, 12th is Charles Jackson, Haru Tashimi runs 13th, 14th, Dylan Poti, 15th is Luke Martin, Richard Johnson 16th, 17th, Chris Kyle. There's a battle back here for what would be uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's between Riley Ogle, Lily Erickson, and James Qualls. Sosnowski's back in 21st, 22nd is Leah Walker. Austin Ogre 23rd, 24th, Rohit Darbu. Widers of Otas in 25th, Sean Henley is 26th. Galligan's way back in 27th, Trent Dunham back in 28th. There's Jeffrey Finn guy 29th, Justin Williams is 30th, I think he started dead last in this race, so he's done a pretty good job picking up some spots, he's picked up 12 spots during this race so far, jo Joseph Bryan back in 31st, Cole Daly is in 32nd, 33rd Nicole Williams, Mark Thomas 34th, 35th is Jake Baskinger, Eric Burton, who came in as the points leader, all the way back in 36th, 37th is Michael Norman, Ralph Mason second in points, back in 38th, 39th is Jacob Lawler, 40th Wolfgang Mason, 41st James McLeod, and there's 42nd Barney Ward. All these drivers are still on the lead lap. But they are awfully spread out. 42nd place just ahead of the leader, Dylan Young. Coming down to the stripe, we're going to have a total of five laps to go. We're going to take our final commercial break and be right back with about three to go. Welcome back. We are here for the finish of today's race, the Track Mania Nations Forever 250 here at Lime Rock. And it has been all Dylan Young all day long. After starting on the pole, no cautions coming out. Dylan Young has used that to his advantage and he has a huge, huge lead over second place, Jordan Davis. You can see right there, Davis just came into view. A long, long gap for Jordan Davis to have to make up right now Barring a caution flag or mechanical problems, Dylan Young has got this in the bag. He just has to hit his marks. And we've seen, though, at the end of races, at road course races, when a driver gets out of this kind of a lead, sometimes they lose their focus thinking they do have this win. And one little slip-up, let me tell you, at a road course, one tiny little slip-up can cut a 15-car length lead down to two car lengths. And before you know it, someone's right on your back bumper looking for the top spot. Prime example, think back to season one, Mobile One Cup Series race in Finneon. It was a battle between Robert Ban and Anthony McCurry. One little slip up ended up bringing out about a great photo finish at that racetrack, a track where photo finishes normally never happen. Dylan Young, gotta make sure he doesn't get overconfident here as he comes through the final corner Coming around to receive the white flag. What a dominating day it's been for that Roush Fenway Ford. White flag in the air. Dylan Young trying to become another two-time winner here this season in the Mobile One Cup Series by picking up today's victory. And how different this was from our Truck Series race. Our Truck Series event, it came down to who had the best pit strategy. Today, it came down to who had the best car and best track position, and both those definitely went to Dylan Young down here towards the bus stop. Let's see if he's going to hit his marks perfectly. He's just got to keep himself focused. Through the bus stop he comes. Perfectly smooth as silk. Dylan Young, I think this thing's got, I think he's got this win as Jake Rogers, Jordan Davis are battling side by side for second place. But it's not going to even matter for the win. Out of the final corner, down the front straightaway, checker flag waves. Dylan Young wins his second race of the season here today at Lime Rock. Great win there for that six team. A dominating win, no doubt about it. Led every lap but one today. The only lap he didn't lead was when he was on pit road and Adam Chambers decided to stay out. So 
Dylan Young leading 19 of today's 20 laps and leading the most important one, the final lap, to capture his second World Cup Series win of the season. What a great job by that team. And as always, we're going to show you the official top 10 results, but I can bet you this is going to be quite a point shakeup today because we saw a lot of our top contenders in the chase way at the back of the pack. And I don't think they made up very much ground here in what we had for our final 10 lap shootout to the end. Dylan Young with the win. Jordan Davis, great run for him. Highest finishing rookie in second. Jake Rogers, well needed run in third. Chambers, who we've gotten word, is the new Mobile One Cup Series points leader with a top five finish in fourth. What a great job by him. That team atop the standings in the Mobile One Cup Series for the first time this season, and I'm almost thinking it might be for the first time ever in his career. Mobile One Cup Series has always seemed to be his Achilles heel series. Drew Austin, great run for him to finish in fourth. Zach Buchanan's going to get fifth. James Silverfox, sixth in points, seventh today. He'll pick up some valuable spots in the standings. Felix Graves is going to finish the day in eighth. Danny Wells, nice run for him in ninth. And Trifon Reed is going to finish out the top ten for today's race. Now, he came into this race a total of 81 points back. I think he's mathematically eliminated, but still a great run for that driver. <clears throat> Whoa. For Penske Racing. Let's try and find the rest of our chasers. So we have to look down quite a ways before we find Kyle Sosnowski. He finishes in 20th place. He came in 5th in the points. Looking further down, Sean Galligan. 3rd in standings. He finished 25th. Why does the vote toss? 8th in points. He finishes 26th. Right behind him, Trent Dunham. 7th in the standings. He finishes 27th. Austin Ogo, who's already been pretty much eliminated from championship picture, he'll finish 29th, though. Joseph Bryan, another driver who's also been eliminated from the championship hunt, he finished 31st. Nicole Williams came into this race 71 points back. She finishes 33rd. Eric Burton, who came in as the points leader, no longer the points leader, 37th. And the second in standings, Ralph Mason finished right behind him in 38th place. Very, very poor runs for those two. And it cost the both of them because the new points leader heading into next week's race is going to be Adam Chambers and the 21 team. How is that going to play out when we get to our final few races? I don't know. We got Texas, Iowa, Talladega, and Zen Joltis coming up to finish off this season. But we still got a Snickers Cup Series race coming up here too at Lime Rock. Be sure to tune in for that. Sure to be a wild one as well as we've now seen two different sides of this racetrack. The strategy side and the dominating side. Which side is going to take place in our Snickers Cup Series event? Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become part of the crew today. Here comes your official fishing results, overall points, rookie points, and chase points. Heading into next week as Adam Chambers is the top points standings for the Mobile One Cup Series. You've been watching a production of the NSA of Flying Racing at its best.